when I was 23, I would do anything for international travel. Especially if it was cheap and a little bit unconventional. I wasn't interested in beaches or swim up bars, no. I wanted to go native. And so I was living at my parents' house in the few weeks leading up to an English teaching job in Hungary when I found Woof, which is this volunteerism organization where you give 40 hours a week to an organic farm, and in exchange they give you a room in their house and three meals a day. And I thought, this is perfect. This is exactly what I'm looking for, and I've never been farming before, but Hungary's never had a wolf program before, so we're basically in this together, right? <laughs> and uh, so I start imagining what this farm is going to be like, and I see these like cute little chickens eating out of my hand, and <laughs> I start thinking about the cheese that I'm going to make that's going to be on the dinner table, and I start imagining my room in their house, and like maybe the bed will be too small because I'm kind of a tall guy, and like beds are small sometimes, but. Maybe that would be okay. Maybe Hungarians are tall. I don't really know. But if, even if it is a little small, it's okay because it's quaint. <laughs> and I'm thinking all this all the way up to the moment where I'm in Hungary after 20 hours of travel from suburban Minneapolis. And um, I'm, in, I'm riding shotgun next to Jörg, who is taking me to his farm, the Pipach Tanya, in southern Hungary. And I'm ready. We need to make one stop, he said. Some neighbors have a tent. It's okay for one or two nights? I was promised a house, but uh, I liked camping, so I guess a tent would be okay uh, for two nights, sure. Good. Last volunteer was a fat and lazy American. I could tell you're going to be different. <laughs> I was going to be different. Remember, I had never farmed before, but I was determined that I could do anything for eight hours a day. So we get the tent, we bring it back to the farm, and we get it all set up, and I'm all snuggled into my blanket, and uh, sort of thinking, like, this will be all right. And then it starts raining. And it was at that moment that I realized the rain cover was a little bit loose on the tent. So as it is raining, I can watch the water bleed through the cover and through the seams on the walls, and it starts to pool in this beautiful little puddle at the bottom of my tent. And I start to think, number one, all my dry clothes are in that farmhouse. And number two, when am I gonna get out of this tent? So the next morning, uh, I wake up and I meet the other woofer, whose name is Harold, and we are put to work cleaning out a pig pen. If you've never cleaned a pig pen, it's kinda like cleaning a litter box, except it's big enough for like six pigs to live in. So it's a process of scoop into rock hard poop, sift a little, and pile all the poop onto a wheelbarrow and then dump all of that onto a compost heap. We did that for five hours in the morning. And after lunch, I did another five hours shearing down these nine foot poles that Jörg told me were going to make what he called the Rooferhut. And the Rooferhut was a... <laughs> was a slab of concrete that had about 20 of these poles next to it that Yerk said was going to be the house where all of his future volunteers would stay. <laughs> so I'm thinking, wait a minute, you promised me a house and here I am building a house. Is this my house? Because <laughs> this doesn't look like a house. Well, that weekend, Harold and I went into the city of Seged, which is in southern Hungary, and it was pure freedom. I drank beer, I ate junk food, I used wireless fucking internet. <laughs> I knew how to understand a city, and Seged was a profoundly beautiful one, at least with my farm goggles on. <laughs> and as we're heading back to the farm, Harold and I start talking about the work we've been doing. And we start talking about how it seems like we're never going to get out of the tent. <laughs> and it seems like, at this pace, we're not really volunteering as much as we are being exploited. <laughs> and so Monday rolls around, and Harold has more poo patrol, which I don't envy at all. But I can tell that he's really struggling with it, because, you see, 
Harold was diabetic. So working out in the hot sun meant that he had to drink a tremendous amount of water and take a lot of rests and sneak cherries on the slide to keep his blood sugar in check because you know, if he didn't, he could die. <laughs> and I had already finished with my work for the morning. So I was resting on the picnic table where we were gonna eat lunch later. And Yurg comes by and the only word for what he did is berate. What, so you're finished with the work so you could just sit here and do nothing? What do you think this is? Is this how you plan to be a teacher? Only work when you feel like it and only for as long as you want and then oh, close up shop for the day. The students don't need to learn. <laughs> and I'm thinking, excuse me, I just worked six hours before noon. I haven't done that since my last unpaid internship. <laughs> And him, he said, pointing to the poo stack, but definitely referring to Harold. <laughs> He's worse than you. Always whining and resting and eating cherries. <laughs> <laughs> He's fat. You're lazy, both of you. If you're not going to work, then get off my farm. Well, that night at dinner, shit hit the fan. <laughs> not the shit from the poo stack. <laughs> We told Harold, or we told Yurk, Harold and I told Yurk, that we worked as much as we were able, and if that wasn't good enough, then he's right, we should leave. And he responded by both demanding that we stay and that we work harder. <laughs> and so Harold and I said, you know what? Forget the tent, forget the long hours, forget the ungratefulness. If this isn't good enough, then we are out of here. And we left Wednesday morning, and Harold drove me back to Budapest and um, dropped me off at the airport, and I hit the reset button on Hungary. People often ask me if uh, I've changed my attitude about traditional travel now that I've had this terrible experience. <laughs> and I haven't really, because it wasn't terrible. I still don't really care about beaches, and I still think swim-up bars are kind of gross. Um, but I do have a much better idea of what I will and won't do for free room and board. Thank you.